Welcome back to Truck Tech, everyone. You know, we love it when we can get in somebody's house. When people invite us in, it's even better. And in this case, the folks at Jamestown, New York for the Cummins engine plant did just that. We're thrilled to be here. We're gonna get a really good look at this place. The home of more engines probably than any place in the country. And our guest is gonna be Sean Rico. Sean, great to see you. Thanks for coming in today. Hello, thanks, thanks for, for inviting us. Yeah, absolutely, thanks for being here. We hope to be able to see a lot. You're gonna show us a lot in, in oh, yeah. just a little while. And we really appreciate it. So folks, let's take a walk. Jamestown Engine Plant, we have about 1,400 employees. This, this company is very important to those 1,400 employees. We also are located in Southwest New York. Southwest New York, um, Chautauqua County is where we're located at. We are the largest private employer in Chautauqua County and bring a lot of revenue into the area for folks. So it's very important for the area as well. So what does it say that we have multiple engine platforms that, that we can build regardless of what the next generation fuel will be. Um, that gives us a long runway. We're expecting internal combustion engines to be around for the foreseeable future for the over-the-road applications. It may change a variety of fuels, but these engines will be capable of whatever fuel that we decide to run as an internal combustion engine. We'll be able to do that. That, that is a rod. That's a connecting rod. All right. Okay. So we'll do this real quick, but how much automation do you actually use in this plant? We just invested about $25 million in a new portion of our assembly line that builds the X-15 in automation. Um, so this is one of the stations here. We call this a cobot. It's not quite a robot. It actually has sensors around there that um, when you walk in, it'll start to slow down so you can't get too close to it. But what it does is it takes and picks up our connecting rods out of the dunnage that we have, puts it on a conveyor. That conveyor then goes over to a machine that'll take the four bolts out of the rods and then it'll actually crack the cap open so that we can assemble it a little bit later. Cobots typically, at least the ones I've seen, are green in color. This one's still yellow. There, there, there's some of them that are green. Um, th this one here is actually yellow because we use the sensors that, that we call it uh, speed separation. So as long as there's nobody within the area, it runs at high speed. When you start to encroach upon it, it'll start to slow down. Um, the green ones actually have force sensors inside of them that if it would bump you a little bit, it knows it bumps you. The green ones are used mostly if there's an application where a human is working right alongside. Right. This one here, a human's not working right alongside. The benefit that it gives us is we don't have to have the Jurassic guard the whole way around. And when I say Jurassic guard, um, we'll walk down, you can see another robot a little bit further down that has like a big cage around it that keeps people around from being right up next to the robot. Usually those are the bigger robots too, right? They are bigger, yeah. but this one here used to in the past, we used to need the Jurassic guarding around. And if you look at it here, it's a lot more open than it used to be because we have that speed separation that allowed us to have a cobot application. And when you say Jurassic, it's exactly what I'm thinking, right? It, Jurassic Park, dinosaurs. It lo looks like what the raptors were inside in the Jurassic Park, yep. Okay. It looks exactly like that. Great, great. engines a day are you doing in this plant? So in this plant, we roughly will do anywhere between 400 engines a day and up to about 580 engines a day. We'll leave the back door every single day. And that's a million square feet that's all put to use in, in a some way. A million square feet that we do not only assembly, we do assembly in about 500,000 of those square feet. And then the other 500,000 square feet, we do machining for a lot of the critical components of these engines. Yeah, and that's up at the other end of the plant. This, this uh, end 
I don't know if it, the north, north we, end. We call or? this the north side of the plant. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. So we see this guy coming out. Where is that AGV taking that particular engine? Where is that going to? So, so that engine is actually, there's a tow line underneath there. These are AGVs over yep. here, so okay. they follow a magnetic trail. That's actually a oh, tow line, okay. so there's a tow line. But it'll go down through the stations here. We have about 65 stations that that engine will go through once it gets on this tow line. It'll go to each station. Each station has unique, unique jobs that they do. You can see we have that operator over there that's touching some of the screen. Those are called HMIs, Human Machine Interfaces, yep. and they will tell us what we need to put on the engine, and it'll also make sure it has fail-safes. And what it'll do is, is the fail-safes make sure that the operator there will pick up the right tools, use them, torque them to the right uh, specifications. Once that's all done, they will sign off the engine and will release it. If they've forgotten anything along the lines or got anything mixed up, it will not be allowed to release until they rectify it to go to the next station. About how, you know, I, I have very brief time in a plant way back in the 90s, about how many jobs per station are you looking at? I'm sure it varies. So it depends on what assembly line we're working at and what our volumes that we're running. So when we scale up and we run volumes, uh, we, will, we will knock this down to about 75 seconds in each station. Now, one of the things you mentioned is that your customers, the OEM customers you have, you have eight days to turn around an engine from the time of an order. That's an amazing number, isn't it? That's right, yeah, eight days is pretty tight. Um, we, we, have, we have a lot of good logistics people here that know what parts to order, and we have a lot of good teams here that can compile the right shop orders at the right time, make sure that we're building it down the line. And we put it on the engines on the back dock. Another thing that is really cool with logistics is we will sequence these engines for our customers. The X12, which is our current version of the diesel engine, has a very similar architecture to the X15, the new next generation X15 and the X15N. And, um, it is actually very strong as well. It's been proven itself in the field to be an extremely strong engine. Not only is it lightweight, but all the weight is in the right places that makes it extremely durable. Right. So when it comes to these engines, and you know, I know that there's a, a lot of supply chain things, are you able to really maximize your supply chain for all the different engines? I mean, is there a lot of commonality engine to engine here? There is some commonality engine to engine. Um, a lot of the sensors are the exact same, uh, but when you start to look at some of the hard components on there, they are different. Uh, but we do use a lot of the same bolts, and any place that we can use something the same, uh, we use the same flywheels. So the same SAE flywheel with the bolt patterns, we'll use the same flywheels on there. Uh, we use a lot of the seals the same around the cranks and anything that can be common. So the answer is yes, we try to commonize any place that we can. Sure, sure. Yeah, so as we, as we look at this line, and this is the line where you can do a lot of different things. Other line is two shifts, you're trying to you know, push out X15s. Yep. Here you're gonna do some, some variation of things. Um, is, is that basically something that, you know, when you, when you have that flexibility, you don't have to batch build, you can go one after another, do whatever you want, right? That, that, that's correct, and actually if you look down the assembly line here, you can see I have an X15. 12 diesel engine right there, mm -hmm. and then an ISX-12 natural gas right behind it. Coming so you can't see that there is there is some batching in there. There's about 10 or 12 of the same engines in a row, but that's not necessary. Yeah, yeah. But we try to build them in a batch because it's easier for our assemblers because when you build one engine, it's easy to go to the next engine. If we don't, if we, if we don't have to build one after another, we like to batch build them. Which most of the days we can build them in, in some sort of method. Sure. We try to build them in efficiency modules. So some, we don't want to build too many of the same engines right away. And because what happens is maybe one station's a little bit slower on the line for one engine. Mm -hmm. So you build a few engines and then you build another variation of an engine behind there so that we can close some gaps up on the assembly line. So there's some strategy on how we batch build the engines together. If we well, can. and you're not building for stock. I mean, you don't do stock engines. You have some aftermarket, I'm sure. Uh, but, very little aftermarket. Yeah. We, we okay. will build engines for um, trucks that have an engine down. But besides that, we don't build for the aftermarket. We're building for all new first fit customers. So, yeah, and these are all these are all built to order. There's, they are. There's no stock here. There is no stock engine. I will not build an engine and put it on the back dock hoping somebody will come and buy it. It is already sold when it comes down the assembly line. Uh, we know the customer, and we know each and every component that the customer wants on that engine. When it's, when, from the time the block is set till we put the paint on and the valve cover at the back, we know exactly who we're building it for and what's on that engine. And we don't see it here, but all Cummins engines are red. They, they will get painted red, yeah. Yep. Okay. 
we, we have some we have some uh, other colors as well that are um, that are off road versions and everything. Really? What yeah. colors are so, those? So we have green engines that are gen sets. Um, we have some black engines that are industrial engines, and then we have some beige engines that are industrial engines. But most of them are red. But you're not doing that the, here. Over the road truck is red. Yeah, you're not yeah. doing that here. We do them here. Oh, you do. You yeah, your gen sets. Yeah, here we build too? gen sets here too. We don't build the gen set, but we build the gen set engine. It's actually built over on that line over there. Huh. Um, same base engine. It's the X15. Uh, we call it the QSX though, and it has a has a fixed geometry turbo on it, a really big turbo on the top that goes onto a gen set. You know, any time we can get to a plant like the Jamestown engine plant for Cummins is a special week. And we hope you enjoyed today's show. A lot of insider looks, and we really thank Sean Rico, plant manager, for spending time with us. See y'all next time.